Let's go ahead and dig into two-player pipeline. Mr. Greg, take uh, it away, sir. All right. So this is Pipeline. In Pipeline, uh, we're going to be oil barons trying to make the most money. At the end of the game, money is points. Yeah. Uh, so what are we looking at on the board? Right in the center is the main board where everything is. Uh, you have the round tracker over here, the turn order over here, the pipeline evaluation, and the crude market in general. Uh, shop pipes and the machines and tanks the contracts and orders, refined market down at the bottom, the government pipes, and the eight, eight of the ten main actions you're going to be taking. The valuations, which are end game scoring, upgrades, which are sort of rule breakers that help you win the game, and your personal player areas, which have uh, the tanks where you're going to be storing the oil that you're going to be getting, the pipeline tracker to track your pipe length, uh, and an area to put your contracts and your orders and your upgrades as well as some general player aid stuff. Oh, and a pile for your debt. <laughs> Which, uh, according to Ian, the last time he played this, he got five penalties. Ian O'Toole, yeah, he took not, a picture not of good. a Ooh. lot of... No, That's less than good. ideal. By the way, uh, before you go any further, I want to point out that w because we ha played the prototype the last time I played this, uh, before a two-player, I didn't know what this was, and Greg pointed out that somebody had made a comment in the Kickstarter comments yes. and recommended that this get added uh, for or in the markers for the uh, so you knew for tracking you the length counting. of your of your pipe, so you didn't have to continually count that. So right, that was pretty cool. Those yeah. those particular markers are the Kickstarter bonus. Normally, there you go. Just, use just use cubes. I should say the markers themselves. Correct. But, but yeah, the the tracking. Yeah. Right. Um, and Edward has one set up, but there's also going to be an area where you're going to have your own personal pipes. Which, during the game, be here and there respectively. Yeah, those are just set up for examples. Um, so, what do you do in Pipeline? Well, in Pipeline, you have ten available actions to you. Eight of which are printed right on the board. I suppose the ninth one is also printed on the board, vaguely. And the tenth one is your own personal pipes, and we'll get to that much, much later. So where do we start? Let's start with the markets. There are four different markets. There's crude market and the three different refined markets. And they all essentially operate the same way. You first sell any oil that you wish to sell and then buy any oil that you wish to sell. So where do you go? Let's say you go to refined market one. In refined market one, you can sell orange or silver oil and you can buy blue oil at the prices listed right above them. The same goes for refined market two, refined market three, and the crude market. The difference being the crude market has all three, up here, yep, all three different oil types available, uh, and you can only ever sell and buy crude oil in that way. If the spaces are full, you obviously can't sell any, and if the spaces are empty, you can't buy any. Makes sense. So that's Four of the ten actions. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Now the inner ones. Now the inner ones. Uh, the machines and pipes and the tanks and pipes are functionally very similar. When you go to machines and pipes, you can come and buy a machine and you can buy pipes. The price for the machines are listed right next to them. And the price for the pipes, well, you have two options. You can buy two for $15 or you can buy four for $40. That's it. Those are your options, no mix mixing or matching. And when you buy from the shop, you must buy from the shop. So these pipes can only be bought when you come to machines and pipes, and these pipes can only be bought when you go to tanks and pipes. All right, so that's six of the 10 actions. Uh, the last two are a little bit easier, actually. Contracts and loans. Get contracts, if you so choose. Get loans, if you so choose. Uh, a loan is $15 and a single debt cube. Those can pile up really nasty. The first one will cost you $20 at the end of the game. So, and they just go up from there. Just FYI, five is minus $200. Which is a lot. That is a lot. Because the winning score is like 700. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, that can really tank your lead. Don't want to do that too often, but in the beginning it can help you get further along. 
And the contracts themselves, there are three tiers. There's, well, low, mid, and high. And the low ones are a little easier to get. They usually involve low oil, mid involve mid oil, high involve high oil. When you come to contracts, you can take one from each row, up to. You could take just one if you'd like, perfectly fine. When you take it, you have two options. You can put it either right there, right to the right side of your board, and that becomes a contract that you must fulfill. An active contract. An active contract. Or you can choose to defer it and put it up there. Now you can only defer it uh, on the first and second year, and the third year you can't defer any contracts. Because the game lasts three years. There you go. So. Uh, when it's deferred, it basically doesn't do anything right now. But at the end of the year, that's going to become an active contract. And these must be fulfilled by the end of the year, correct? They must be fulfilled by the end of the year. If they are not fulfilled by the end of the year, you get another debt cube. And the contract goes away. So it doesn't mean, so away meaning out of the game. Out of the game. Out of the Got game. it. Uh, fulfilling the contract is just as simple as having the oil in your area that matches the oil that you need. So in this case, you need a blue high grade and a blue low grade. The second you have any oil that is a high, that matches the thing, you immediately can, so let's say Edward had that. So as I refine oil, when it becomes there, it then can go straight over to get that. Yep, and you immediately get the money listed for contracts. Now contracts have a set amount, low is always worth 20, Mid is always worth 35 bucks, and high is always worth 45 bucks, which is considerable, because that can be a really quick boost to your economy. Now, that is contracts and loans. The last one on the cross is upgrades. When you come to upgrades, you can buy an upgrade. All upgrades cost $20. In the beginning of the game, you can only buy the one upgrades. You can only ever buy a 2 or a level 3 upgrade if you have the previous prerequisite upgrade. And I'm going to show folks here. Yeah. So that there you go. So there are three ones, one two, and one three, meaning only one player can get to a level 2, only one player can get to a level 3, and you have to have a level 1 before you can get a 2, so on and so forth. Yep. When you purchase an upgrade, let's say, you know, Edward buys the government one, that now becomes unavailable to anybody else for the rest of the year. Now, at this point, Edward has another choice. He can spend another $20 and buy another upgrade. Sure, human resources. Why not? Well, because 40 bucks is what you start with. That's a lot of money. That's maybe why not, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and at this point, he can choose to block off a third one if he'd like to. And he doesn't get it but he makes sure that nobody else gets it either. Now this is completely optional, you don't have to do that, and you also don't have to buy two. You can so if I bought just one, what then? You can then block off a second one if you wanted to. So you okay. can block off that one. Got it, okay. All right, so that's eight of the 10 actions. Now I should point out that each of these inner ones have the turn order manipulation symbol. And all that means is, so turn order will look like this from round to round. So right now Jess is in first, Edward's in second. Well, comes to Edward's turn, he chooses machines and pipes, does his whole turn, whatever. And then he decides, you know what? Next round, I'd like to be first. And you just put your disc there and you make a claim for first. Easy enough. So when the round ends, you're going to reset. Uh, now if there are multiple players and multiple people, so Jess chose that first, now Edward goes to choose it. He can bump her out and she's now... So whoever out. chooses first last will become first in that case, right? Yes, yes. But if somebody doesn't go to any of those four spots, you cannot change turn order, correct? Yep. If Jess went to the refined market, she just has to deal with it. Okay. Easy enough. Now, there are two actions that aren't necessarily printed very easily on the board. But the first one is government pipes. Government pipes, there are four markets to consider. In the beginning of the game, none of them are open. But you can choose to open anything 
uh, when it first starts. So you can choose to open one of the four markets on your turn. Okay. So all you do to open it is you go to the market. When you put your person down, you can buy anywhere from one to five pipes. Yeah, and the prices are listed right here. The important thing to consider is that the person, uh, the tile that your person is on is the pipe you must purchase as a minimum purchase. And the other four that you can purchase are the four that directly touch it. Okay. And so that, that's number nine that's option number nine. for actions. And number 10 is possibly the more complicated of the actions. So let's get Edward some oil. And I'm going to go here, there to get ready for this. And let's say I have purchased this oil from the various crude markets out here or possibly from the refined markets. And I have crude oil in my tanks ready to go. Yep. So one thing we didn't really quite go over is how the pipeline evaluation itself works. There are four tiers of oil, crude to start, low, then mid, then high. In order to go from crude to low, your pipe length must be an equivalent of five for orange, four for blue, and five again for silver. Meaning the oil has to pass through that length of pipe for it to go from a crude to a low grade oil, yep. correct? And if we look at the pipes, we can explain how that works. Uh, each pipe tile has four pipes on it. One, two, three, four, or if you like looking at this one, one, two, three, and four on a single tile. Yep. Uh, now pipe length is each of those notches. So the orange pipe length, for example, would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Which going back to this is more than enough. Right, as long as it's five, we're good to go, correct? Yep. So that's the minimum length it has to be. Now what if it's over that length? Well, the blue length, you'll know, goes from, uh, to go from crude to low is four, and to go from low to mid is six. If you combine them for a total of 10, you can go from crude to mid in one go, and we'll explain how that works, but the pipe length for the blue is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Almost like someone planned that. Weird how that works, huh? So all you do to use a pipe is to place your person on a pipe tile that goes through that pipe. And this one goes through both the orange and the blue. So what you can do now is you can... So, oh, go ahead, please continue, sorry. So it is effectively, you take the crude oil that you have and you churn it through the pipes so, not literally, but this orange is going to go through there. And go from crude to low, and the blue would go from crude all the way up to mid. Now, what's important to note is you don't have to go all the way to mid, and there are reasons not to do that. Say, a contract, or you don't have room. Uh... Let's say those were up there, right? Right. So you can't go all the way to mid, and you can't go all the way to high, so you kind of have to go to low. Oh well. Now if the opposite were true, and the low were covered, and the mid was open, and you have your blue pipe that lets you go from low to mid, you can totally skip over the, the low. So you don't have to have a space available even though it went from crude to mid. Correct. Got it. Yep, and um, what's important to note is that each pipe can only process one oil at a time. So even though you have a pipe length of 10 for the blue and you could do, you know, effectively two blues at once, uh, length worth to go from crude to low, uh, you can't because you only have one blue pipe. Okay, so just to make sure that I understand this, so I have two blue crude. And looking at my pipeline here, I have enough to be able to go from crude to mid, but it's literally one cube of oil per pipe length. So unless I had two of these blues 
that were like that, I could only do one per action. Correct. Got it. Of each color. Of each color. That that person touches that pipe. Right. It is possible for the pipe length, the pipe tile, to go through all three colors or three different pipes sure. or four different pipes. Uh, because of the way that we have it set up, it's not perfect. But you could do up to about three different pipe lengths. Okay. Because of the way everything spreads. All right. And do you want to talk about the silver just as a final example? Oh, yep, yep. And so the silver we have set up to go uh, crude to low to mid to high. So it needs a total of 16 length, which 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Perfect. But I would not be able to process this because my person was actually put on the orange and blue, so I would have had to have gone, say, to something like that, which would get the silver and the blue and not the orange then, correct? Correct. All right. All right, so uh, one thing we didn't go over is how exactly machines work. So on your turn, uh, you have two phases. The action phase where you picked one of those ten available actions, and then immediately following that, there's a machine phase. By default, the machine phase costs $15 to perform the action, but when you do it, it runs all of your machines. So when you've purchased a machine, you place it somewhere on your network. Now, it perfectly covers up half of a tile. Now, any pipe length that runs into a machine can't be run manually. So if Edward were to try and manually run the blue or the silver <laughs> pipe, Eh, nothing's gonna happen. The machine's there for a reason. But you can still run the orange pipe because it's not attached to the machine at all. There we go. Now, the machine functionally acts as a conveyor of oil. It does the same thing as manually doing it, but you don't have to manually do it. So now Edward could go from crude to mid on his blue and crude to high on his white. Not quite on the blue because that actually covers one of the length of pipe, correct? Correct, it does. And you can actually bisect your pipe and make it so that, yep. Uh, if you do it like that, so even though the blue is going in twice on the left, it still only is one pipe. Right, because one pipe, two pipes. But if you were to do that, the two crude oil that he has, of blue, would be able to go lit, uh, low, right? Yep. So they, these two would be able to... Now, we just talked about how you can't do two through the same length of pipe, so explain that. So now the machine has cut the pipe in half and is no longer the same pipe. Those are now two distinct different pipes. Okay. So I could run one blue, either direction doesn't matter, and then the other blue, and they're both at least four. Oh, yeah, so four. that refines two from the crude to the low. Correct. Got it. And if I had put this over here, it would run the blue, and unfortunately that would only be from either low or crude to low or low to mid because it now is only nine instead of ten and for the silver it would also refine that a uh, total of 15 and 15 being whatever you need being from crude to mid or possibly from low to high correct correct got it okay that all makes sense um yeah and the last consideration are the orders now the orders aren't an action you can take but there's something that you can do after you've processed enough oil. If you can fulfill any of the orders that are currently on the board, you can claim them. They immediately pay out and you remove it from the board and you can take it, put on your area. Uh, is that the one? Uh, no, here, let's, let's say it were like this here just to show everybody. So it would require one low blue, a high, orange and it requires a low silver now just because you have a mid silver you can sell it as a low silver but you only get paid as a low silver so whatever the requirement is is what you're getting paid for right essentially they're demanding low so they're only going to pay for low that makes sense you're just giving them a better quality of oil than what they request so these prices are a little bit different right yep so low is now 30 mid is now 45 and high is now 55 
So that would have paid me, let's do some quick math, that'd be 60, 115. And these would go back into the supply. So let's go back to the supply. The order is removed from the area. No, you keep it because of the valuations. Aha, uh -huh. up here for end game. Yep, so end game is scoring for the valuations. There is always one that is always in the game the value of pipelines attached to machines. Now, we haven't gone quite over in-game scoring. Okay. Uh, so this will all be sort of calculated together. The number of pipeline types. You can have up to nine for this. And what they're asking for is each color and uh, the value of the pipeline in each color. So in the base case of our example, without the machines attached, we have one orange that goes from crude to low, one blue that goes from crude to mid, and one silver that goes from crude to high. That's three different types of pipes. So one, one, and one, three different types. And that would end up being 60 bucks at the end of the game. However, and I'm trying to uh, finagle something and failing to be able to do so quickly. Top left. Oh, nope, that wouldn't work either. Uh, this would. Okay, so indulge me. So last second little adjustment. So getting back to, nope, that still doesn't work, does it? So explain this one a little bit more thorough. So if you had a orange pipeline that goes from crude to low and a second different orange pipeline that went from crude to mid, that would count as two pipes in addition to the crude to mid blue and the crude to high silver, that would be four different pipes, and now it's worth 100 bucks. It, it scales pretty uniquely compared to the others, uh, Jess, if you want and to. And here, I'll go ahead and show everybody this a little bit more highlighted here. So, nine combinations, good luck trying to get that. Maybe Ryan could do this, or Tim, but as it is, Realistically, you're looking somewhere in the neighborhood of three to six, three to seven, probably. I think I ended up with six on our right. Exactly. Area. But right. they and so they need to be different. You couldn't have three, correct. Um, so here, yeah, here's an example. So right okay. here, the low is mm -hmm. five length, and the mid is five length. So a low would be it. there, right. but you couldn't also count this one because that's the same thing. It would need to go from low or from crude to mid, and a separate one that would be crude to low. But given that they're both five, if you have two five-length, two different five-length orange pipes, those wouldn't be different? They no. would not. You would need a five-length and a ten-length. For the five length would be for the low. Oh, they're the 10, all from crude. There so you they go. all start at crude. There That's you go. What you're there, to say. there you go. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. This is probably the most confusing of the valuations, but it's also one of the most original. We really like this, so this was. I can see why, but yeah, I mean, really, just the thing to call the thing that's confusing is they all start from crude. crude. Correct. Uh, the last two valuations are the value of fulfilled orders and the value of fulfilled contracts, and those are pretty straightforward. Whatever you've already done in the game, you get that money again. Now, the fulfilled contracts is important. If you fail to fulfill the contract, it's gone from your thing, and you don't, you're not going to get anything for that. Correct. Um, the other considerations for the end of the game is that all oil that is left remaining in your play area is going to be worth some money, depending on how what the value is. Mm -hmm. If it's low, it's worth 10. If it's mid, it's worth 20. If it's high, it's worth 30. Same thing with the pipelines themselves. You're going to add up the length of the pipelines, see how far they can go, and those are worth 10, 20, and 30, respectively. And just as a reminder, so I would have a pipe of low, a pipe of low, a pipe of low to mid, and a full uh, one, so I would have 20, so two of the lows, yep. a mid and a high for a total of $70 at the end game in that case. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then the valuations minus your penalties. Minus your penalties and cash on hand at the end of the game. The only thing that I think didn't cover is secondary actions. Oh, you're right. I did not cover secondary actions. So, there are is potential to take a second action as part of your main action. However, the requirements are that you have to take one of the cross actions. So one of those eight, got it. Yep, and you must uh, pay $10. And when you do so, so let's say you come to the crude market, 
and you do whatever you were going to do at the crude market, you can pay $10 and also ooh, take contracts and loans. There uh, you go. Yeah. HR lets you break that a little bit. You can cross the cross. We're not going to get into that until it comes up, if it does. Um, so yeah. each of these are paired. Correct. Each of these secondary. are paired. And yes. the four center ones are variable each game. Yep. And you can take that secondary action just to do the turn order thing, which I've done in the past. Because uh, 10 bucks to change turn order, it's not a bad price. So there's your eight, your pipes are your nine, and then the government tiles are... Are ten. And there you we can't go. take a secondary action for government tiles? Correct. Correct. Nor can you for running your pipes. Right. There is also... Um, oh, one more. That last pipe on your left. Thanks. There is technically an eleventh action you can take on your turn. You can elect to pass. Bad things if you're passing. Yes. Uh, and turn or, or how the turns work. Uh, yeah, and the, the years. That's it. And then we can get started. Yep. So every round the year marker is going to move down the way. And when it gets to the beginning of the year, we're going to have a refresh phase. We're going to refill machines, refill tanks. These are going to get completely renewed. Uh, we're going to fulfill more contracts. So these will slide out. These will come out. And we're going to empty the various markets. Uh, we're going to empty the refined markets that have sold goods up top, and we're going to fill the markets on the bottom and the crude markets on the top. We fill them according to the diagrams as shown on each section. Um, and the upgrades will become available. All right, and just to rehash, the costs of these pipes are listed right there. The cost of these pipes are listed right here. Yeah, ready to rock and roll.